Let's take a look at some push through 12 volt LED sign pixels. I've featured the 5 volt ones of these before and I thought I'd get the 12 volt ones because I wondered, have they just basically taken an ordinary LED and used a higher value resistor and it's just wasting the extra energy as heat? It turns out the answer is no. And that also explains why all these LEDs are based on phosphor coated uh, chips, except the blue which is the native colour of the chip they've used, which is a triple chip LED on one piece of uh, the LED material. So the idea is that you drill holes in your signage, and this is where you want a basic row of pixels. You could outline lettering, you could have a border, um, and you do get these. The Christmas lighting industry loves the colour changing ones, but these are nice, simple, single colour ones, quite cheap, and just but there's no fancy control system. But the idea is you drill holes in your material, typically about 8mm diameter, but that will vary depending on the material. And then you physically just push them through like a grommet and they click into place and it gives you a sharp point of light in front of the sign. Um, the other advantage of this is that if you've got the LED, the 12 volt neon type material, the the fact these are 12 volt means that that's compatible with that. You can basically just intermix it off a single power supply in different sections of the sign. Uh, another advantage is the reduced current. Versus the 5 volt stuff, this runs at roughly about half the current, which means that technically speaking you can run longer strings off it uh, without worrying about the voltage drop along that. So now uh, we've seen them lit. I'll show you before I, I go too far. The fact it's three chips per LED also has a slight disadvantage. Watch this. If I turn the voltage down, you'll see that all the LEDs have gone out, except for this one. And the reason for that is that that's a triple chip LED with one failed chip in it. Uh, these came from eBay, by the way. I feel I should mention that. It's probably a dumpster uh, LED section. But I have done the computations based on one chip being shorted out. And it's actually not too bad. Even at 12 volt, the current through this isn't too bad. So let me uh, show you a picture of the inside of the, one of these modules. Because I took one to bits. I should say the green, incidentally, is quite a ferocious cold green. It's not a soft apple green, but the orange, the, well, the yellowy orange and the red are both very, very warm. The other colours are good. Not so keen the green, but that's just, you know, my preference perhaps. I shall turn these off and I shall stick them out the way because I have opened one of them and it's notable the LED inside. Uh, in the red ones, it's a 5mm LED, but in the other colours, it's actually a little 4mm LED. Let me show you what's inside. I shall zoom down on this. I shall focus down on that as well. And we'll get in, in and close. So what we have in here, the classic thing, it's the tiny little circuit board. There's a 361, so that's 3610, 360 ohm resistor in series with the LED. And you get the loop out contact. So the two power cables come into it and then the two go out and the, basically the positives just come the other side and the negatives come in on this side. The little plus symbol is for the LED. Um, there is the housing with its backstop and then the front flaps that fold down and you push it through the hole and then kind of ping back up again to lock it in place. Or maybe actually just stay down, not sure the best way. I guess it could be used with thin metals, but it could also be used just wedged in with these acting as a little sort of ratchet and these acting as a stop for thicker plastics and stuff like that, or thicker metals. If we take a look at the inside of the LED, because I looked at one through a microscope to see what was inside. I looked at one of the blue ones because it doesn't have any phosphor. Inside each of the LEDs is this chip. It's not very big if, if that's the LED cup, uh, the chip's about that size inside it. And it's divided into three sections. The negative comes on here to one corner and then it lights this LED and then it's the positive of that one loops to the negative of the next one and then the positive of that loops to the negative of the next one and finally we get the positive connection on here and that means that it's just one little rectangular chip but it's got three LEDs in series. That also explains why it is the phosphor because uh, that means that by using a base of blue they can just have blue light or they can add red phosphor, yellow, green, um, they can add purple, pink, cold white, warm white, it's just the same chip used every time. The current at 12 volts, each LED draws 9 milliamps, which is about 0.1 watt. 
At 11 volts, it drops to 6.7 milliamps. At 10 volts, it drops to about half the original current at 4.6 milliamps. And at 9 volts, 2.5 milliamps, and 8 volts, 0.6 milliamps. And it's worth mentioning that even at low current, these are quite bright. If you were using these indoors, I'd actually recommend using them closer to the 9 volt threshold. Uh, so this is where it's quite useful to have a variable voltage power supply. So you can just nudge things a little bit. Or uh, for short sections, you could just basically have a wee cascade of diodes in series just to nudge the voltage down. That will also result in much longer LED life because if you run them, run LEDs harder, they, uh, the phosphor degrades and the chips degrade faster. But if you underrun them, they just last a lot longer. So there are lots of advantages to that. But that is it. They're quite nice. It's good that they've used triple chips instead of uh, basically just using a single LED and a higher value resistor. Let's turn these back on again. They're quite nice. And uh, it just allows you to make that simple signage or a feature or a decoration or even just use them as strings of lights on their own because they are inherently pretty waterproof. I say pretty waterproof because um, I've used these outdoors in the past and because uh, there is a certain thermal expansion contraction of different materials, it does result in separation away from the LEDs and moisture can creep in, but it's not usually too bad. They usually last a good length of time and I've got some outdoors that have lasted many, many years. It's been pretty good. It's also worth mentioning the way these are constructed. The uh, LED and circuit board is put into a mould and then it literally injection moulds the plastic around these. That's why they can uh, pot it in so tightly. They're pretty good. They're not that expensive. They seem to be fairly common in Chinese signage. So um, I'd say these are quite fun to play with. Uh, definitely worth getting some and experimenting with. I'll provide a link to the seller I got these from in the UK. But, you know, it's one of these things. You can get them anywhere. They're really common, really popular in China. So you'll find them on eBay and AliExpress. And they're just quite fun to play around with. Quite nice little lights.